While passenger and cruise ships travelling the open oceans sometimes get into difficulties or sink, it does seem to be a disproportionate amount of passenger ferries and transport crossing rivers and lakes that sink and result in a large loss of life. So what are some of the factors which govern this risk relating to river and lake ferries? In order to see what makes these vessels sink, we first have to look at what keeps them afloat in the first place. Boats are normally constructed of metal, though sometimes wood is used. The shape of the hull and the hollow space inside means that even though the materials used can be generally denser than water, they can actually float on water. Now the more weight, like passengers and cargo, the vessel carries, the lower in the water or the less buoyant the vessel becomes. In addition, the vessel takes on water from the surroundings, either from small leaks, a large hole, or water splashing over the sides of the boat, again becomes less buoyant. The combination of water and weight from the cargo becomes too great, the vessel can start to sink or possibly capsize, killing the people on board. Now these risks are known to occur in both ocean-going vessels as well as inshore ones, but their operation and the assessment of the risk and the governance of these vessels means that these risks are not always handled in exactly the same manner. Now during a journey, nearly all vessels take on water to some extent, in the form of small leaks, especially common if wood is being used for the hull of the vessel. Alternatively, a wave or similar event like spray can go over the side of the vessel, or in the worst case scenario, the ship can bump into something and put a hole in the hull. Since an ocean-going vessel is by its very nature more likely to encounter large waves and spend most of the journey far from land, it's vital this water is removed from the boat before it becomes too great and becomes a threat. So ocean-going vessels will have both more pumps and more powerful pumps than those on rivers or lakes. This means that on an ocean-going vessel, if something catastrophic occurs, hopefully the pumps will keep the boat afloat long enough to signal to help and also to get everybody into life jackets and lifeboats. On a river boat, whilst the pumps are present enough to deal with normal incidents and leaks, they're not normally able to cope with a critical situation, so the boat may actually sink quicker than an ocean-going vessel. If the water enters a boat doing very from a single location, like an underwater hole, a key way in keeping the boat afloat is to stop the water from spreading to all parts of the boat on the same level as the hull. To prevent this, the boat can be divided up into compartments which can dramatically slow the progress of the water from one area of the ship to another. So the ship is divided up into six compartments and one of them leaks and starts to fill with water. The other five compartments still can remain buoyant and keep the ship afloat. These compartments not only slow water from going backwards or forwards in the ship, also transferring from one side to the other. We'll come to the implications of that later. The number of these compartments vary from ship to ship, with larger vessels generally having more compartments. However, there is an operational issue with these compartments, so they make loading passengers and cargo more difficult, as any obstruction to the movement of people or goods on the ship slows down the loading process. Now, on an ocean-going vessel, a slight delay in loading doesn't amount to much in a long voyage. However, on a short river crossing, the longer it takes to load and unload, the fewer trips a boat can make, and therefore seriously alters its profitability. This game means that river and lake vessels tend to have fewer compartments than a similar sized ocean going vessel, and some have none at all. This can mean again that if they start to take on water, they're likely to sink quicker. The other problem with taking on water on one side of the ship is the weight of the water can start the vessel to lean over to that side that the water is entering. If the ship has good pumps and is compartmentalised, the water can be pumped to the opposite side of the ship. They can even deliberately take on water on the opposite side, known as counter flooding. It means the vessel will sit lower in the water, but it does stop that lean, which can be more dangerous as it can easily cause the ship to capsize as it rolls over onto one side. Capsizing is extremely dangerous due to the speed at which it happens, the injuries and damage caused whilst it's happening, and the difficulty it then presents in launching lifeboats, putting on life jackets and evacuating the ship. 
And if there's a hole in the ship and it's taking on so much water that sinking is inevitable, best will try to get the passengers to safely. Now, in most circumstances, this will involve radioing for help, getting passengers and crew into lifeboats and similar actions. However, lake and river boats have an option available to them that's not normally available to ocean-going vessels to head towards either shallow waters or to the nearest port before the boat sinks. Well, at first it seems likely to save lives, it can sometimes be disastrous, since in order to head this required direction as quickly as possible, the ship may need to execute a sharp turn. While this normally isn't an issue, however, if the ship has taken on too much water, the turn could mean that the water moves to the side of the ship, and then that capsizes the boat. So an attempt to save lives may actually make the situation worse. Overloaded or overcrowded river and lake vessels are also vulnerable to capsizes in other ways. In order to quickly load a boat, the cargo may not be correctly stored. So for instance, if all the bulky but light cargo is stored on one side of the ship, but all the heavy stuff is on the other side, that kind of poor cargo handling again makes a capsize more likely. In addition, the ship is overloaded and runs into a relatively minor difficulty. All the passengers can move to one side of the ship and again, that transfer of mass, especially if it's high up on the deck of the ship, can turn a minor incident into a disaster. As well as these factors, there's one that's governing government regulation and operation of the ships. Ocean game ships will face regulations from different nationalities of each of the ports they enter, as well as from the country where the ship is registered. And while one of these countries may have lax regulations and oversight, it's likely that the others will ensure that the vessel is operating safely. However, if the vessel is just crossing a river or a lake, likely just one government would be involved, possibly just one official, who may not enforce the rules, may have even be bribed to look the other way, especially when it comes to overloading of boats. Overloading of river or lake boats is fairly common, as again, the more people and goods they can load, the more money they can make. However, sometimes there are also local factors at play. For ocean going vessels, if a particular route is more popular, at one time of the year, additional boats can be brought in from other routes to share some of the load. But it's far more difficult for river boats and lake crossings, where that boat may be the only one in the area. This could mean that on periods like holidays, festivals, and market days, the demand for mass passengers and cargo is greater than the boat can safely carry. But since they're the only boat available, these seemingly have little choice, but to be considerably overloaded when they sail, making an accident much more likely to happen, also meaning that more people may die if something does go wrong. The situation is also magnified by weather conditions. While ocean-going vessels are designed to cope with extremes of weather conditions, river and lake vessels are nowhere near as well constructed and may occasionally face weather that's almost as bad as on the open ocean. The boats could be taken out in bad conditions due to poor forecasting or the attitude of taking a chance on the conditions not being too bad. Then this leads to another factor separating ocean-going and shorter-going journeys. On an ocean-going vessel, the crew are generally all well-trained in evacuation and emergency procedures, and there are enough lifeboats and life jackets for all the passengers and crew. In addition, the passengers are told what to do in case of emergency, and where to go, and there are clear signs indicating what they need to do. It is far from the case for short journeys. There is lack of life-saving equipment, especially when the boat is overloaded. There are also generally fewer crew, and those crew are not as well trained for emergencies. One advantage is that passengers on a river or lake crossing appear to have, they're generally not far from shore and safety. However, remarkably few people can swim, and even for those that can, the act of suddenly being immersed in water, possibly in the dark, and in panic means that only the strongest swimmers can make it to shore, even if that distance is only a few hundred metres away. The key to preventing these disasters does appear to be better regulation and enforcement of existing regulations, especially in developing worlds like places like Bangladesh, where these incidents occur with an alarming frequency, with ageing and unsuitable boats being operated in dangerous conditions, risking the lives of passengers.